signal Hornet. We attack immediately. Aye, sir. For four days in June of 1942, the American and Japanese navies fought the Battle of Midway. The history of the world since then was shaped by that battle. The drama, the crises of war, have always provided material for writers and filmmakers, and Midway has stirred the imagination of many of them. But movie makers deal primarily in fiction. How then to go about dramatizing a conflict so overwhelming in scope and still holding close to the line of history? Well, in many ways. But one of the best is to consult with the people who were there. And that's our subject, the men of Midway. These men had come to watch the recreation on film of perhaps the most dramatic moments of their lives. They were an intelligence officer, a dive bomber pilot, and a torpedo plane pilot from the carriers of Midway. Men who'd contributed mightily to an overwhelming and critical American victory. Midway was a strange battle. The opposing warships never came in sight of one another. It was a battle of aircraft carriers. The carriers launched their planes into combat from hundreds of miles apart. Some planes flew so far they ran out of fuel and fell into the ocean. Others, their carriers on fire or sunk, had no base to return to, stranded over an empty ocean. Never had the odds against pilots' survival been so great. How did it all start, though? How did the aircraft carrier, that awesome weapon, come into being? In a famous test set up back in 1921, Brigadier General Billy Mitchell led his squadron of seven land-based planes 100 miles out to sea on a mission to attack and try to sink the supposedly unsinkable captured World War I battleships. Well, they did it in less than 22 minutes. So far, so good. But how do you take a floating air base out to sea? In experiments conducted as early as 1910, the civilian pilot safely executed takeoffs and landings from and onto a platform-rigged cruiser. Finally, in 1922, a coal-carrying ship, the Jupiter, was rebuilt with a flat top, a floating runway. She was commissioned the USS Langley, and the aircraft carrier was born. Planes landed and took off from her deck. Crudely at first, but successfully. Proud new names now appeared in the fleet roster. The aircraft carriers, Lexington, Saratoga, Ranger, the magnificent Yorktown, Hornet, and Enterprise, the last three destined for duty in the Battle of Midway. The ships and the men. Admiral Nimitz, Henry Fonda. Admiral Halsey, Robert Mitchum. Admiral Spruance, Glenn Ford. Commander Rochefort, Hal Holbrook. Commander Jessup, Cliff Robertson. Captain Maddox, James Coburn. Commander Blake, Robert Wagner. And as Admiral Yamamoto, the renowned Japanese actor, Toshiro Mifuni. Rear Admiral Max Leslie, who was a young lieutenant commander at Midway, led bombing squadron three. Helen leader to Helen group. Time to arm our bombs. From the carrier Yorktown in an attack in the Japanese fleet. I made the first dive, and my squadron followed directly after me and delivered a devastating attack on the carrier, which was a big one. Joseph Rochefort, Captain, U.S. Navy, retired. About the time of Coral Sea, we uh, uh, identified AF as being midway. And right off the bat, everybody said no. Can you tell us how you broke the code that gave away the Japanese plans for midway? If you have this flown to midway, uh, it's a fake message, Admiral, reporting that Midway's freshwater condense is broken down. Instruct Midway to include that in their housekeeping traffic tomorrow. Send us right away. There ain't nothing wrong with a freshwater condenser. Dabrowski, send it. They took the bait, Admiral. AF has to be Midway Island. It was Midway. Not bushwhacking. The fact that our third visitor, George Gay, is here to talk to us at all today is a miracle. In the Battle of Midway, all 15 planes of Torpedo Squadron 8 were shot down.
Ensign Gay was the only man to survive. Going into the water, uh, the engine was on fire, and I had already uh, lost my gunner. We had a slight crosswind, and the right wing touched the water first, and I kind of cartwheeled in. Well, the whole jet fleet ended up around me, and the carriers were there. They were all burning and blowing up, and uh, I was sitting right in the middle of the whole thing. When I saw this on the motion picture screen, just the way it happened, with all the realism of sense around, it really got to me. Through a long day and night, he floated in the ocean until he was picked up after the battle by one of our rescue PBYs. Beyond question, Midway was the turning point of the war in the Pacific. We can hope the Navy need never again fight a battle on which so much depends, but we must never forget it. Mm -hmm.